New Yorkers aren't shy when it comes to talking about their run-ins with the afterlife in the city. Many locals claim ghosts haunt NYC's old buildings and parks. Some are less quietly than others. John Lennon is said to haunt the Dakota, where he was murdered. While Nancy Spungen, Sid Vicious's girlfriend, is rumored to be spending the afterlife at the Chelsea Hotel. Today, we consider the 10 most haunted places of New York City. The Morris Jumel Mansion. One of the oldest houses in Manhattan, this stately Georgian mansion in Washington Heights was built by Roger Morris, a colonel in the British Army in 1765. It served as military headquarters for both sides of the revolution, with George Washington retreating here after the disastrous loss of the Battle of Brooklyn in 1776. In 1810, the house was bought by Stephen Jamel and his wife Eliza. After his suspicious death, she remarried in 1832 to Aaron Burr, the former vice president and the killer of Alexander Hamilton. Since the 1960s, rumors of the supernatural have persisted when a group of schoolchildren allegedly saw the ghostly visage of Eliza Jumel, who told them to quiet down before gliding away. The Dakota Building. The Dakota is renowned for its scene-stealing role in Roman Polanski's 1968 horror classic, Rosemary's Baby, and as the site of John Lennon's assassination. However, this legendary Central Park West building has a long history of supernatural encounters in its own right. Over the years, workers and residents have reported seeing a friendly little girl dressed in turn-of-the-century clothing, an adult with the face of a small boy, and even the ghost of Lennon himself. The Campbell Apartment The Campbell Apartment was once the office and salon of financier John W. Campbell, who died in 1957. According to current owner Mark Grosich, employees have felt strange presences, including something pushing them from behind and bursts of cold air. And some have even reported seeing an old, fashionably dressed couple sitting and having a cocktail on the balcony when the place was completely closed. The House of death. This beautiful townhouse has been called the most haunted building in New York City, with as many as 22 ghosts calling it home, earning 14 West 10th Street the title The House of Death. Mark Twain lived here from 1900 to 1901 and claimed that he himself experienced supernatural incidents. Throughout the 20th century, this was the site of several gruesome incidents, including a murder-suicide and the beating to death of six-year-old Lisa Steinberg. The spectre of Twain himself has been seen ascending the staircase on many occasions. St. Mark's Church in the Bowery St. Mark's Church in the Bowery is the second oldest church in Manhattan, splitting from Trinity Church in 1799. Built on Dutch colonial Governor Peter Stuyvesant's family farm, legend has it that the cantankerous peg-legged Dutchman still haunts the area. 
He has been known to harass clergymen and parishioners, ring the bells, and loudly interrupt services by stomping around and singing Calvinist hymns in Dutch. Apparently, English Episcopal hymns simply don't agree with him. The Merchant's House While some haunted houses might try to lose their notorious reputations, the East Village's Merchant's House Museum does not. Built in 1832 and later bought by wealthy merchant Seabury Treadwell, the museum is an immaculate look into the personal, domestic lives of the 19th century cultural elite, although the ghost of Treadwell's daughter still haunts the place. The Manhattan Well. In the winter of 1800, the body of a young woman named Julielle Massands was found at the bottom of the Manhattan Well at what is now 129 Spring Street. The ensuing trial was one of the great scandals of 19th century New York, with Levi Weeks accused of her murder after he reportedly impregnated and promised to marry her. Weeks retained the city's top attorneys and was acquitted, despite growing public outrage. In 1817, the Manhattan Well was filled in and built over, but it was rediscovered in 1980 and has since become a notorious destination for paranormal enthusiasts, claiming that the ghost of Julie Elma Sands still haunts the area. The Conference House Located at the southernmost tip of Staten Island, this colonial manor was used by Loyalist Colonel Christopher Billop as a way station for British forces during the Revolutionary War. It also hosted the unsuccessful Staten Island Peace Conference on September 11th, 1776, with Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Edward Rutledge in attendance. In 1779, Philip suspected a 15-year-old serving girl of spying for the rebels and allegedly killed her by throwing her down a flight of stairs. Supposedly, her ghost can still be heard screaming today. What's more, the area was also used as a Lenape Indian burial ground for thousands of years before European contact. The Lefferts Laidlaw House. In Wallabout, an 1840 Greek revival home, a stone throw away from the Brooklyn Navy Yard, there may be a sinister secret. One December evening in 1878, resident Edward F. Smith reported hearing a knock at his door, but when he went to answer, there was no one to be found. The knocking persisted, while the back doors and windows were violently rattled and banged. The unseen tormentor continued harassing Smith until he called the police. While the cops staked the area out, someone, or something, hurled a brick through the dining room window, despite the fact that multiple officers were standing right outside. 85 West 3rd Street. Now part of New York University's Furman Hall. 85 West 3rd Street was once occupied by Edgar Allan Poe for eight months in 1844 and 1845. This was when he wrote his classic story, The Cask of Amontillado, and at least part of The Raven. Nowadays, the only part of the original residence that remains is the banister, and Poe's ghost has been seen climbing it 
by spooked law student.